There's a good chance you've been asked this before. What is Angelman syndrome? I'm going to break down the science for you real quickly. In Angelman syndrome, there's a missing or a non-functional copy of a single gene on chromosome 15. And as we know, that gene is incredibly important. Angelman syndrome occurs randomly and is rarely inherited. It can be considered a de novo mutation, meaning that parents typically aren't carriers. So we all have pairs of chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, maternal, and paternal. And on these chromosomes are genes. The genes are read and make proteins. In most cells, the body reads both copies and they function pretty much identically. Identically. So if there's an issue with one copy, we have another one that can take its place. No big deal. But in this situation, we have to deal with something called imprinting. In the brain, the father's copy of this gene is naturally silenced. There's a strand of RNA, which is genetic code. It's stopping the reading of the UBE3A gene on the dad's copy. Now that's in all of us. And why am I talking to you without Angelman syndrome? It's because my mother's copy is being read. My Izzy Mae doesn't have that. The mother's copy is missing. So because she has no functional copy in her neurons, she has Angelman syndrome. There are several different genotypes. Like Izzy Mae, there's deletion, meaning there's a piece missing. There's mutation. There's UPD and ICD, which in those cases, you have two of dad's copies, which is unfortunate because they're both naturally silenced. And there's mosaicism, which is even more rare. These genotype differences are important when we're looking at what therapy options we have for our children. Stay tuned for more.